Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, I'm going to talk about the schedule for cash disbursements for direct materials, and I'm also going to talk about the direct labor budget. Okay, so in our prior lecture video, we went through and we calculated out our direct materials budget. And what we said is here's the cost of the materials that we have to purchase. Here's the amount of materials that we have to purchase. Here's the cost of those materials that we have to purchase. This was in pounds. This is in dollars. Okay. So now what we say is, well, how much cash do we have to pay for all of this? Because when we purchase these from this, these direct materials from our suppliers, our suppliers are granting us credit, which basically means we can purchase some of these materials using our credit card more or less. Okay. So what we say over here is we have a few assumptions and we say half of the month's purchases are paid for in the month of purchase. Half of April, therefore, is paid for in April. The other half we pay for in May. Okay. There's no discounts for any early payment. And then our accounts payable balance on March 31st was 12,000. And this is accounts payable at the end of quarter one, the end of March. But this also translates to accounts payable for the beginning of April in the beginning of quarter two. Okay. And that's something that we've talked about in prior budgets that this is at 1159 PM on March 31st. You turn the clock one second forward and that becomes beginning accounts, accounts payable for April and April is the beginning of quarter two. So this is not only beginning accounts payable for April, but it's also beginning accounts payable for quarter two. On the next page, we have our schedule of cash disbursements table. And so what we can say is we have our beginning for quarter two right there. And we know looking at the prior page, that's $12,000. And then what we say is April purchases paid for in April, April purchases paid for in May. That's the way this table works. April purchases, $56,000. Half of April is paid for in April. Half of April is paid for in May. So half of April, $28,000 paid for in April. And then $28,000, the other half, is paid for in May. We can add these two, and this is the total cash that we have to pay for our direct materials purchases in April. Okay, 40,000, the 12 plus the 28 gives us the 40. Now, just similar to what we did with our schedule for cash disbursements, I mean, schedule of cash receipts, this is our schedule of cash disbursements, so similar to what we did for our schedule of cash receipts, we want to determine what is accounts payable at the end of April. So basically it's $28,000 because that's how much we still owe for April purchases. So if you think about this, what we are doing over here in terms of journal entries. So for April, we debit raw materials for $56,000 and then we credit AP accounts payable for $56,000. And then what we do to pay, to pay some of this that we did over here, we debit accounts payable for $28,000. And then we credit cash for $28,000. So if we think about this in terms of our T account right over here for accounts payable, we had 56 right over here. And then we put the debit right over there, 28,000, which means we have leftover of 28,000 right over there. This is our balance and accounts payable at the end of April. 28,000 is the balance for accounts payable at the end of April. Okay. This is how much cash we pay for April, but 28,000 is the remaining that we still owe for April purchases because we only paid for half in April. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop the lecture video, complete this for May, June, and for the quarter, and tell me AP for quarter two. 
what is accounts payable for quarter two, and what is the total cash disbursements for quarter two. So pause the lecture video and then complete the table and let's come back and check your work. Okay, hello and welcome back. So you can see over here for May, we have half of May purchases paid for in May. Add that to half of April purchases that we also paid for in May. We add those two together, cash disbursements for May, 72,300. Repeat the same thing for June, half of June purchases paid for in, and I'm sorry, half of May paid for in June, and then June purchases half of June paid for in June. Add those two together, 72700 adding across right over here, $185,000 is total cash disbursements for the quarter. I also asked you to calculate accounts payable at the end of quarter two. So remember what we did for the schedule of cash collections, we were talking about accounts receivable. And I asked you in that lecture video, what is accounts receivable at the end of June and accounts receivable at the end of the quarter? And they were the same answer. Why are they the same answer? Because the end of June is the end of the quarter. It's the same thing over here. What is accounts payable at the end of quarter two? It's the same as accounts payable at the end of June. How did I get 28,400, which is the correct answer? It's the 56,800, which was this, half of this we paid for in June, half of this we pay for the next month, which is the amount that we still owe, we still owe half, and that is our accounts payable, okay, 28,400. All right, so now let's talk about our direct labor budget. So our direct labor budget is gonna show us the total direct labor costs for the period. And the way that we're gonna figure that out is by saying how many units are we gonna produce and what we also need to know is how long does it take on average for a, one of our assembly line workers to make the units? Does it take them 30 minutes to make a unit? Does it take them 10 minutes? Does it take them an hour? And then how much do we pay them on average per hour? So what we're saying over here, if we look at this, each unit requires 0.05 hours of direct labor and each hour that we pay them on average, it costs $10. So we're using an average rate of $10 here. So we're not separating this out by maybe junior assembly line worker and versus senior assembly line worker. Maybe senior gets paid more and junior gets paid less, and then we split it out between junior and senior. We just take the average of those two just in the interest of keeping a little bit less complex, okay? So we're taking the average wage rate, all right? And so we say over here, once calculated, we can determine, we can, this can help us determine how many employees do we need. So let's go ahead and start to complete our schedule right over here, our direct labor budget. The first thing that we need to know is how many units we, are we going to produce? And where do we get that from? Our production budget. So we have to look towards our production budget. So if we look back at the production budget, we would see we're gonna produce 26,000 units for April and 46,000 units for May. And it says right over here, each unit requires 0.05 hours. Thirteen hundred hours. 2,300 hours, and then on average, each hour costs $10. Okay, so here's what I want you to do is I want you to pause the lecture video and complete June and then the total for the quarter. I'll put Q2 total right there. So complete those and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's see how you did. So June, 29,000 units, which you get from the production budget, times the 0.05 hours per unit, means we need 1,450 1, hours total, times the $10 per hour. This would be our cost. This is dollars. And then we can add across for the, for the quarter two total, 
101,000 units, 0 0.05 hours per unit, 5,050 hours times the $10, $50,500 total. Now, if I set up here, once calculated, that can be used to determine the approximate number of employees needed. So if I look over here for May, I need 2,300 hours total to make those 46,000 units. How many employees do I need? Well, if I have, if each employee works 40 hours per week, and then we have four weeks in a month, that means each employee works 160 hours. I need, I have a total of 2,300 hours. 2,300 divided by the number of hours worked by each employee gives us about 14.375 employees. So between 14 and 15 employees, you might have to have one employee work a little bit more over time, or perhaps you can hire one on a part-time basis. This is the way you would help use the direct labor budget to help you solve your staffing needs, and that's also very important. Okay. So this concludes this lecture video. In the next lecture video, I'll talk about the manufacturing overhead and then the ending inventory balance and then also the selling and administrative budget. Thank you.